Bloody. Man, I can't cross my toes. <laughs> I I'm trying, but I, I can do like the one next to the big toe over the big oh, toe. No. That's about it. Oh, we're, we're in. Way. Looks like it paid off. There we go, and we are in, and this is game number three of the Barbecue Empire's best of nine bonanza. Up to the northeast of the map in blue, we have got ourselves Mr. Falcon Shrey playing as the Saracens. And down to the south, playing in the red, we have Poz Eddie also playing as the Saracens. That's Saracens two games in a row. Yeah, kind of unexpected to get Saracens twice, but... Map pack, it, sorry, it's not the map pack, it is migration, and Falcon Shrey said something about that, but look at that from Eddie right there, did you see that dear Lioran? Very early lure for him, very well played. Yes. Uh, and, okay. looks like we're good. Okay, yeah, sorted. Um, yeah, I mean, that nice little dear Lior, even with the, um, even with the villagers right there, really cool. And, obviously, migration, a little bit challenging at the start to find your sheep they're not always in a great position and you can see straight away that eddie's sheep are gonna be a little while before he finds them i feel yeah definitely not in the nicest position at the moment and if you got waiting for other players as well yeah. right now it's i think Ooh. they had a little pause hope so uh but anyway because it's a good chance to look at the map actually right now uh so like you said eddie's sheep not in exactly the best situation right now uh but Going to be able to lure those deer in fairly easily, and it looks like he's got a lot of fish over in the back there. Yeah, back fish for Eddie, quite nice at the back of his island, and of course, I don't know, you know, I mean, that, you see on the right-hand side of his island, he's got that little bit of, yes. um, it's almost like shallows. I don't know if he's going to be able to send a boat over there or not, and if he is, then that's a little bit more of a problem. But if that is actually closed off, then Eddie's going to have very nice fishing in the back. Yeah, I think we should be able to see a ship go over. That would be surprised if it didn't. Yeah. But I'm kind of got fingers crossed for Eddie that it doesn't, because that's just going to have a nice little inlet there in the back where he's just going to be able to really just build up fishing ships. Yeah, exactly. I, that's something that Falcon Shrey isn't really going to have in terms of uh, an actual kind of private lake almost. Uh, it has got pretty <laughs> good fishing, though. I mean, up to the north, reasonable. Down to the south, reasonable as well. But the positions of these guys, they're actually fairly close together. And if they do scout each other with a fishing ship, then we could see quite a fast, well, a faster feudal coming into play. Because as we know, players on migration, they do tend to go for a lot of fishing ships before they go up to the feudal age. And... Uh, sorry, up to, well, yeah, up to the feudal age, uh, then go with a the fast castle. But with the islands being so close together, we've seen this before, uh, it could be possible for them to go for a more of a galley rush in the feudal age and take water quite easily. Yeah, it's definitely possible considering how much, well, how little the r rush distance is in this map. Can we all get galleys now really quickly, sink as many fishing ships as possible, especially if you get up to three dock really early. Uh, but overall right now, I'm just looking at the main map and I'm seeing a very small amount of gold and they're both in the exact same location. Yeah, I'm seeing that as well. Obviously, right here on the far left, which is pretty much as far as you could possibly be away from both players starting islands right now. Yeah. So I'm thinking if Eddie takes the island, I think he will get an advantage with that. Because as we know, taking water, yep. very gold expensive. So we'll just have to wait and see, I guess, how this develops. Yeah, and obviously we should always have a look at the gold on their starting islands. I think the one for Falcon Shrey here, sure it's on a hill, which means that uh, Eddie's boat's going to have an attack uh, re reduction. But I, I think that's in range of the water right there, especially once he gets um, War Galley out. Yeah, War Galley and Bodkin, I believe, once he gets that, he will definitely be able to hit it. And at that point, villagers just going to be running left, right, and center. Uh, Eddie's looking pretty good on the other hand, though. Might be able to come in from that sh line there at the back and get a little bit of harassment, but pretty good overall. Yeah, I'd say that gold spot for Eddie is at a nice position. Not to mention as well that this gold for Falcon Shrey is on a hill. It, it kind of makes it much more awkward to take gold like that. Whereas Eddie's is much easier to take. It's it's kind of nice. And that, of course, is going to be pretty crucial. One thing I would say, though, is that Eddie's berries right here, very close <laughs> to the water. And, uh, you know, villagers taking the berries later on in the game could get picked off by some galleys if they come in. But obviously, I mean, this all really comes down to how the players end up scouting and whether they scout their opponent and realize how close they are exactly you can do a lot of damage from the water but the fact is you have to know you can do it before you will go for it so really if falcon Tray moves in quickly manages to scout those berries i 
even Eddie, I don't know if he really wants to go for them, actually. But if Falcon Trey can delay those berries, it's going to be a good reaction that if he notices the wood towards the left-hand side of Eddie's town center can be harassed in the late game, then, yeah, he should be able to hold that water and push with it, hopefully. Yeah, so, I don't know, we'll have to wait and see. At the moment, it looks like they're both going for a pretty standard kind of uh, migration build. Of course, you've got to remember that they both don't have any boar, so... I mean, obviously that is going to mean that they are taking a lot more wood a lot earlier. Starting to take those fishing ships as well. And obviously going to be opting to go for fishing ships rather than farms. Yeah, migration is just a map where you can see an absolutely massive fishing boom. You can see some crazy imperial times because, of course, uh, while you're going up in age, where you're creating villages, you can have fishing ships going all at the same time, which, of course, just increases your overall just gathering production. Yeah, definitely. I mean, three, four docks, not unusual to see that in the Dark Age at all. Um, but I really think that scouting in this map is is so crucial and something that can really influence the players' decisions on how they decide to play it. And at the moment, I'm not really seeing any of them, either of them going for that. And it's not something that I see a lot of players doing, to be honest with you. Yeah, because like you said, once you know how far your opponent is away, you can really judge on the fact that you should be going for galleys early or you should be waiting and going out with a higher economy. Third dock already coming up for Falcon Stray though, and Eddie's second only just coming up about now. Yeah, um, you know, I don't really know what Eddie's like as a water player, but um, I believe Falcon Stray pretty damn good on the water for sure. Uh, but obviously migration quite different to any other map out there because the importance of the center island. And not only do the players have reasonably sparse wood on their initial islands, uh, but the gold as well, as you said. It's, it's so crucial that they end up taking this big island in the middle and going for the gold on there, going for the wood on there as well. Yeah, that's it, because there is no trash for water. You can't just kind of get into the late game, have no gold and get it back. You need to have that constant gold production and playing on a water map, it uses up a lot of gold. Yeah. Like pretty much constantly. Um, you can't, as you say, just fall back to something that costs only food and wood. You are relying on gold entirely right here. Looks like, though, Eddie going to go for a little bit of a faster feudal time here. He's not investing so heavily into ships. He's starting to take gold. He's also taking quite a lot of berries as opposed to Falcon Shrey here, who's only just started on that. So faster feudal for Eddie. Falcon Shrey still in the Dark Age, and he will be for quite some time. There goes that scouting fishing ship for Eddie as well. He nice. will notice Falcon Shrey very early here, so he knows exactly where his opponent is and exactly where he wants to push. Well, yeah, I mean, he's going to clearly see right now that that dock is right there. This is Falcon Shrey's island. There is no disputing it. And Eddie probably going to go up with uh, docks on this front side right here because the distance isn't that far at all. And Eddie now going to be up to feudal fairly quickly indeed. Falcon Shrey going to be a little while before he clicks up and... I don't know. I mean, this could be pretty bad for him if he loses a lot of water. Yeah, because like we usually talk about, the reinforced time is generally in the defenders. Well, it's always in the defenders kind of area there. But with a rush distance like this, you're not going to be outmassed so quickly. You can bring it back at relatively the kind of same space that they are. So it puts you in a really good position when attacking there. It gives you a little bit of a bonus. Yeah, of course. And, you know, if you do end up losing a lot of fishing ships on the water here... Uh, you, you are going to lose a lot of resources. That's a lot of wood right there that you might lose, um, or that you are going to lose. Eddie now then is up to feudal, starting that galley production straight away. No messing around. Market going up. Uh, Blacksmith should be going up as well, but the important thing for him right now is that he starts dealing Ooh. damage to Falcon Tray straight away. Yep, there's a blacksmith on its way up already, and a lot of resources in the bank actually for Eddie. Could potentially be going for a fast castle there off the back of that. Falcon Shrey, lots of resource in the bank as well right now, but not going to be able to get any defensive galleys out yet. Yeah, obviously still only in the Dark Age right now. Looking to fast castle as well, there is no question about it. But, I mean, if he starts to lose his, uh, his fishing ships already... And if uh, Eddie isn't far behind in terms of fast castling, which he's not because he's clicked up. He's already up. <laughs> Man, Eddie is going to be wow. in a great position here. I agree. I was not expecting this from Eddie. I knew he got really good on open maps, definitely yeah. on land maps. I saw a few good games between him and Stark at that point where Eddie was in complete control for most of the game. Uh, but I didn't know about the water, but right now, Eddie playing like a pro. Well, this is exactly what I was saying about scouting early on this map. Because Falcon Shrey, if he'd have known how close Eddie was, he wouldn't have stayed so long in the Dark Age. Uh, I mean, right now, Eddie's almost halfway up to Castle. Falcon Shrey hasn't got the gold to click up because he's forced to build galleys. 
and that's huge. That's really huge. Wow. This is this is absolutely brilliant play again by Eddie here. So we've seen a lot of good play so far in this, but Eddie's just had great judgment. Yeah, I mean, Eddie right now is in the perfect situation to win this game. Valkenstray losing quite a lot of uh, resources uh, from these fishing ships going down. And of course, Eddie, yeah, he's going to get pushed back. Valkenstray going to have higher galley numbers right now, but he's still feudal. He still doesn't have the gold to go up to castle. Eddie's going to hit the castle age. War galley is going to be done. Bodkara is going to be done. And that means faster building, faster, well, stronger ships. And I mean, from there, how is Valkenstray going to defend that? Exactly. Eddie at the moment, he sacrificed getting more fishing ships out to be able to get up to feudal faster and from there castle faster. Uh, Enshrey, of course, doing the opposite. He's delaying his feudal time to get more fishing ships out. But Eddie just ran in, killed off all that that he worked to get the advantage for, and now he's just going to be stuck behind and only just clicking up to castle age. Yeah. Uh, Eddie actually making fire ships right now, which actually, you know, not Ooh. a bad decision at all, really. I mean, Saracen's yeah. faster firing speed on the water, well, on fish, on blah 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 boats so uh <laughs> gonna be in a reasonable position to go in with them because it's gonna make very short work of uh galleys at this stage as well of course the Definitely. war galley upgrade as well no no questions there and falcon Stray now such a bad position for him to be in of course fire ships generally not built at all because once they you get to castle there's just so many galleys out it's not worth it but at this point there's not many galleys out at all for Enestray right now, and Eddie can be able to really utilize these fire ships. Yeah, of course, if uh, Falcon Stray micros nicely, like he kind of is doing here, he, it, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult for, for Eddie, obviously, going forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards. But it's quite a lot of work to do to take out these two fire ships, and really, I don't know if that's worth it for him right now. Yeah, it's just... Oh, wow, this is absolutely stunning play at the moment. It looks like Falcon Stray will lose the water here. Yeah, one thing I have noticed though from Eddie right here, he's actually been population blocked quite a lot, which is clearly going to be slowing down his military production, which is kind of a big deal because it's giving Valken Shrey the chance to catch up. But he's really struggling in terms of water control right now. And, you know, he's actually built a transport over to the center island uh, in the hope of taking that instead. I think that was definitely a good call, because at this point, I think it's pretty much assumed, he's assumed that he's going to lose the water right now. And if he loses that, he's going to be restricted to his island, galleys all around the side, and he's going to have to GG it in. If he takes the middle, though, there is potential to come back from here. Can put a, ga uh, a castle up on the shoreline, and then just build docks and hopefully try and yeah. get the water back. I mean, he always has the possibility as well to even go for a faster Imperial Age time, uh, build galleys all the way along the left-hand side, uh, or the... Yeah, like left hand side of the main island and then make a comeback yep. onto the water. Obviously, that's certainly possible. I mean, it's even possible for him to try and land Eddie's main base because, I mean, he could do that if he built docks uh, just across from yeah. him. So, I mean, there's still lots of possibilities for Falcon Trey right here. But at the moment, it's looking pretty bad for him in terms of his, uh, his water at this stage. Yeah, you're exactly right. At this stage, the water... It's I wouldn't be surprised if he loses it completely, then tries to get it back. He is coming in with some more galleys now, but I don't know if it'll be enough against... Ooh, those fire ships, though, are going to have a little bit of trouble getting in close. Going to try and lure him out into the open by the looks of things. Yeah, he has got uh, war galleys mixed in there as well. He's also got careening done. Uh, Eddie has, that is. Um, so, obviously going to give him a little bit more of an advantage there. He's also Definitely. starting to take villagers over to the center island right now in a transport. So, I don't know, I mean... It's going to be pretty close, I feel, in terms of the entire game, but I still feel like Falcon Stray going to be having to play uh, from behind if he loses these galleys here. Yeah, definitely, and I think the biggest thing to note right now is that Falcon Stray hasn't spotted any gold on the center island. Eddie, on the other hand, knows exactly where it is, and that's exactly where he's going to be heading. So, not going to be good for Falcon Stray if he loses this gold area on his main island. Yeah, of course, that is probably going to be hittable from the shore right there. Eddie bringing in some reinforcements right now. He really, Eddie should be winning the water here, but Falcon Trey is actually holding on. He did build a lot of docks over on this left-hand side, so he's still got the galley production he needs at the moment, and I feel like those fire ships from Eddie were really wasted in a sense. Yeah, when those galleys were just coming down through this small area here, they definitely had the advantage because, of course, they just had to file in one or two at a time towards the clump of galleys that we saw from Falcon Trey. So really a good chance to pick them off, and he did exactly that. Yeah, definitely. So big engagement right now over on the right-hand side. Eddie's definitely going to take that, though, because 
Cloud Strange does not have the numbers. Uh, no university for either of them, so no ballistics done just yet. Uh, but I feel like Falcon Strange going to be in a reasonable position at still because he's got these two TCs up in the center. But as you say, not finding any gold, which is really a big deal. Yeah, it's really just going to come down to who's, who grabs that gold first and how this works out on the water. If Enshrey can take the water, then his gold back at home going to be fairly safe and he can start putting some damage over onto Eddie. But if he doesn't, Eddie going to be able to pretty much take every bit of gold away from Falcon Shrey and Eddie just putting up his university now. Yeah, university going up for Eddie, as you say, and ballistics being researched as well. So, I mean, that's really going to help him out on the water, especially for many retreating ships that Falcon Trade might have. Oh, man, Falcon Trade, I think that was a bit of a misclick right there. That hurt. That hurt to watch. <laughs> That really hurt. This is bad for Falcon Stray right now. We're losing a lot of galleys there really unnecessarily. And Eddie gonna come in here, able to, gonna be able to take out these fishing ships, and Ooh. that's a big deal. Siege Workshop actually coming up in the center for Eddie, and it is unscouted still by Entry right now. Yeah, Falcon Stray hasn't seen that, but he's going up with a 40 C in the center of the map. I mean, talk about overkill there. Uh, Barracks going down as well for him, but as you say, yeah, that Siege Workshop going down, Mangadel out, and I mean, it wouldn't be Eddie without a monastery, right? <laughs> exactly. We're about to see arena style of migration, so good to see how Eddie can push this right now, and of course, relating it back to something he knows completely. Yeah, so Manganel is going to come out, and let's see what he can do with this. I mean, if the villagers charge the Manganel, he could take it out pretty easily. He could get a siege workshop up of his own. But, I mean, it's going to be a while before Eddie manages to take down four TCs right here. Yeah, especially with no support for that Manganel. Like you said, the villagers can just pretty much bum rush it at this point and still manage to take it out, taking minimal damage. Definitely could do, but Eddie, gonna get those bunks out anyway, which is gonna give some support at least. Um, Falcon Trey though, two archery ranges at the back, but no military production right now. However, well actually not even however, I mean, Eddie's just taking the water. I was gonna say Falcon Trey, uh, alright on the water, but he's not. <laughs> really bad for Picking him. Taking all these ships around the backhand side there. And at the moment, I think, though, that Eddie's point here, this point of attack, it's pretty much cutting off Enshrey from any gold, though, that he could have. Yeah. So I feel like this was good positioning as well. I think he might have thought about this and noticed if he puts up a solid wall of defense here, then Falcon Shrey, he's going to be down to just trash. Yeah, I agree with you totally. But the thing that Eddie hasn't scouted right now is Falcon Shrey's uh, gold on his island. If he knew this gold was here, he would definitely have uh, ships right here forcing Falcon Shrey off of gold. And I mean, that could be the finishing blow if he finds it. At the moment, though, doesn't look likely. But mm. pushing it at this front uh, on the mainland going to be kind of a big deal. Yeah, taking out one town center already is ready to push up with more. Uh, Arch is coming out for Falcon Tray right now, but he is population blocked. Manganel coming out in defense as well. Yeah, but that is one Manganel against Eddie's three right now, and I can't imagine he's going to stop production of Manganels anytime soon. So Eddie here, going to be able to start pushing it in, and I don't know, you know, with that many Manganels out, Arch is going to be quite hard to micro against it. Monk's behind for support as well. It's just going to be tough. Yeah, you're right. It looks like Falcon Trey coming around the left-hand side of Eddie's base, so trying to take out as many fishing ships as possible here. Definitely a good choice to make before losing the water completely, because of course, if you can nullify the bonus that Eddie is getting from those fishing ships, going to put him in a little bit of a better spot. Yeah, definitely. I don't think Eddie has Ooh. that many fishing ships right now, but yeah. Oh, you're looking you, at the Manganel in the middle. Yeah, <laughs> you were right about the Manganel micro there. Eddie managing to take that one without losing one altogether. Definitely. I'm just, I don't know, I, I feel a little bit disappointed in Eddie that he's not scouted around Falcon Shrey's island properly. Uh, if he just comes up here, I mean, that gold is his for the taking. Um, I suppose at the moment forced back to deal with these uh, war galleys from Falcon Shrey as well, though. Yeah, all he has to do, if he just tails around the island a little bit, uh, he's going to be able to see it, and as soon as he sees it, he's going to know exactly what he can do. Uh, but it does look like the island is ending there. If you put one warp galley just in that little area there, next to the land, uh, he's going to notice it straight away. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I don't know, I think Falcon Shrey here in a pretty tough spot still, but he might actually be going up to Imperial fairly soon. Obviously going to be spending a little bit of gold at the moment on making these archers, but look, he's still got all these fishing ships, which is surprising considering considering Eddie has the water. This dock on the north side of the large island, providing him with a lot of food. 
Yeah, I can't believe that Eddie's allowed to just actually sneak out of there completely. Eddie, like you said, uh, not taking all the routes he could be on the water right now to gain all the advantage. He has got the water, but he's not abusing it as much as he could be right now. Yeah, he definitely could be abusing the Ooh. water a little more. Um, center of the map, though, looking yeah, yeah, pretty messy. Eddie losing <laughs> mangonels. Yeah, Eddie losing three. Looks like on Shrey lost three as well, actually. Uh, but Eddie has got those monks, but look at this. Falconshray with so many crossbows right now. If he pushes out with them, he can push Eddie away pretty quickly. And I think Falconshray realizes at this stage he's kind of lost water. So at least if he can hold this land, then he's going to be in a good position. Yeah, that's it right now. And then the fact is, though, whoever takes this island is pretty much going to get the game. Because from there, you can go on to take the water back because you're the only one getting resources. So it's, it's going to be interesting. This is a lot closer than I thought it was going to be once I saw the start. Yeah, I mean, Eddie Ooh. really could have abused the water a little more, as you said. But, I mean, this is a good combination from Monshrey right here. Light cavalry and crossbows. So, kind of good for him. But, oh, man. Looks like Eddie, Eddie might find the gold. If he just goes a little bit closer, he's going to... Uh, yes, he Does sees he see it. it. Okay, he right. sees it. Now he can hit that. Okay, Monshrey in a bad position right now. If he... If he loses, he's, got, he's gonna be denied gold completely. That means no Imperial upgrade. That means no, um, no more Siege, military, really. no archers. Yeah. Just trash. That's all he's gonna have. This did not make life easy at all. Yeah. I think this might be the blow that Eddie needs to actually knock him out of this game. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. certainly possible for him to do that. Of course, Falcon Shrey taking the score lead right now, but I put them down, down pretty much purely to army. He's got uh, 23 ranged units at this stage, 9 cavalry as well. He's going to come in here Ooh, wow. and take Eddie out very, very quickly. Here comes up, Mike. Oh, is he good? How's he going to do convert-wise? Like even if he does, because, I mean, the archers yeah. behind this going to be able to take him out pretty easily. He's going to focus down the mangonels where he can. Oh, man, Falkenshrey losing so much to those mangonels, though. That hurt. Really unnecessary. And another one's going to get out. Manny's going to get another one. Eddie, Come on. No. What are you oh, doing? Okay, no, he's just going to suicide it. That was a waste. But That was. That could have been another five or six crossbows gone, potentially. Uh, whether or not he just misclicked and just told it to go to the archers instead of attacking them, I'm, I'm not sure there. I don't know. Either way, though, Falcon Shrey forced off of gold on his home island right now. Very little gold income, but if he powers through Eddie right here, he will be able to take the gold at the back, and he has scouted it, so he does know it's there. Yeah, that's exactly If he takes his gold at the back here, not going to matter so much that he was kicked off the main one on his island, but still... Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's looking like Falcon Shrey could take this game now. He's up a lot in score, battering rams out on the main island. He's ready to push just Eddie completely off. Yeah, if we have a look at the population, it's 165 to 107 right now. He has one massive army, and you know, once this TC from Eddie goes down, ultimately, I mean, the starting island doesn't matter. The resources are nearly depleted there. There's very little left in terms of, well, what you can gain from it. And ultimately, whoever takes this entire island is, well, main island, is going to take the game. So, crucial that Falcon Shrey takes this gold here. Yeah, that's it. Eddie at the moment does have water control completely, but I don't know how much that matters at this point. His opponent's on the main island. He's not going to really be able to do any damage with the fact that Entre is situated pretty much right in the middle. And if we just look at the economy that Entre is up behind this, it's absolutely huge compared to Eddie's. Yeah, I mean, really, his home island looking pretty deserted right now. But so much wood, so much uh, food as well. Able to spam trash all day. Just really focusing on taking Eddie off this island for now. And if he can do that and secure the gold, then... The Imperial upgrade won't be too far away for him, and from there it will be GG. So, I mean, Eddie's looking in a, a pretty tough spot, I've got to say, at this stage. Yeah, it's gone from completely in Eddie's favor to completely against right now. And, ooh, Falcon Tray actually selling off a lot of food. They're going to be able to buy, essentially, the Imperial Age research now. Yeah, there we go. Uh, Imperial for him, and... There we go. I, I kind of expected that, but he kind of needs to get some stone income right now. I mean, that would be really handy for him, because, I mean... I suppose he could upgrade his siege. I mean, Saracen's pretty damn good siege, but getting a, a castle would really just secure the water as well for him. Obviously, he can upgrade to Galleon in the Imperial Age and retake the water again. So, I don't know. Eddie is going to be so hard-pressed to defend this right now. 
Yep, get Eddie actually out of gold on his main island there, so really not going to be going anywhere from here. 300 gold in the bank, that's what he has to play with, that at a market. Thank God his Saracens right now, yeah. but still not going to be easy at all from TL to get that Imperial Age research, and Falcon Tree really just going to be able to walk all over him with the tech advantage he's going to get. Now just have a look at the map right now, Falcon Tree's coverage on that centre island is massive. I mean, he is really just... He started out from like a, a, a few archery ranges and you know a couple of stables. He's just busted out and taken it all. Uh, it's kind of mad, really. Obviously now as well, starting to take that gold and imperial upgrade about seventy five percent. I don't know what Eddie gonna do once the imperial upgrade comes in. Yeah, we could potentially see the GG as soon as Falcon Trey actually hits Imperial here, but I feel like Eddie will hold on for a little bit, then realize just how far he's got behind before he actually resigns out here. He's, I reckon we'll see one last push. Maybe. I mean, he has got this castle up right now, so I mean, it's not impossible for him in this position. Um, that castle going to be a bit of a nuisance, but if Falcon Trey comes in with a castle on this hill, for instance... It's going to put him in a much better position. Treps can come out. Of course, Rams can be upgraded once he hits the Imperial Age as well. Just not taking any stone at the moment. Yeah, a lot of Rams actually out for Falcon Straight here as well. So that castle is going to go down relatively quickly. A few Knights out for Eddie right now are going to soak up a lot of that Skirmisher damage right now. Ooh, good Manganel hit though for Eddie. Yeah, I mean, a lot of skirms out for Falcon Trey here, really just padding his army out with trash where he can. Um, but, I mean, three knights, still going to die pretty quickly to the amount of crossbows and light cav he has. Falcon Trey upgrading to capped ram on 50% right now. And, I mean, Falcon Trey could probably afford to suicide a few trash units here because I mean, he has got a much bigger economy. He's got a lot of food income, a lot of wood income as well. Yeah, he's luring those knights out right now. And, oh, there's, there's the, the GG. GG from Eddie. Man, well wow. played by Falcon Trey. It was very back and forth. I agree. Forth. Very back and forth. That went... I was, I was nearly sold that Eddie was going to have that one in the start game there, but there we go again. Yeah, I agree indeed. Um, I think ultimately there, Falcon Trey, just with that bust out there, really able to do huge damage, and especially, you know, once he got up to the Imperial Age, once he had that siege, Eddie really had nothing to stop it. Um... I mean, and that castle would have gone down very quickly indeed. But, you know, it's surprising that Falcon Shrey came back in such a big way after losing the water so quickly, uh, you know, as he did. I agree. That was absolutely crazy to see those players just... It went completely one person's way, then just got switched around just like that. Uh, well, obviously, good play from Eddie at the start there, but just not able to push it through. And Falcon Shrey having an amazing comeback. Yeah, of course, this was Falcon Shrey's home map, and that was game three. Three score is currently now 2 1 in favor of Falcon Shrey. And remember, this is a best of nine, so it is the first two five games. Um, so, yeah, we're going to come out right now and play a quick ad, but don't go anywhere because game number four will be coming up in just a moment's time.